John T. Boy's boy, Witherspoon. That was my dude, man. Um, uh, I first fell in love with John's comedy back when he did uh, Hollywood Shuffle. He played the old dude, uh, whole cakes, everybody loves whole cakes, whole cakes, yes. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves whole cakes. Hoes got to eat too. <laughs> I fell in love with his car. I fell in love right there. Like he had me at hoes got to eat too. That was my line. I was like, I was like, that's my dude. I went back home and um, when I seen Keenan, I was like, who was that dude, man? Who played, who played that old dude? He's like, that's John Witherspoon. I was like, man, I gotta meet him one day. So, um, you know, finally we met him uh, on uh, Robert Townsend Partners in Crime and he was always doing something funny and it was really good to meet him. And as me and Marlon got older and, and um, started uh, moving on in our comedy career, we was like, yo, when we do our show, that dude's gonna be our father. That's gonna be our pops right there. And we were little boys, but we knew that that dude was gonna be our dad. So we finally got the opportunity to do our show. And originally our show was done on NBC. We shot our pilot for NBC. And we wanted John Witherspoon, but NBC didn't want him. But we hired him anyway, they, they, they wanted, <laughs> yeah, it was like, we didn't care. We was like, that's our pops, that's pops, that's it. Take it or leave it. Take it or leave it. So um, the show didn't get picked up on NBC. <laughs> but they dangled that carrot on in front of us because we was on the bubble of one of those shows that would have been picked up. Um, but they kind of, you know, they wanted us to hire a different dad. They wanted, actually, they wanted Danny Glover. Listen, we all love Danny Glover. I think he's a tremendous actor, but I couldn't see him on our show calling me and Marlon over talking about, get Marlon Shaw, get in here. Get in here. I'm getting too old for this mess. <laughs> get in here. Riggs. <laughs> so, so they didn't pick us up. As Letterman would say, pinheads. They didn't pick us up, and um, NBC, they was, like, was kind of dangling the carrot saying that if, if uh, we would get rid of the dad, they would pick us up. If you change it up, Negroes, we'll do it. And I was like, nah. It's like, forget it. We, we just won't do the show. Luckily for us, Warner Brothers, WB, started a network, and they needed a flagship show, and our show was the show that kicked off. Yeah. Are y'all playing me off already? Like, nigga, keep your hands up here, nigga. Don't you keep them up high. You still, you're killing my time. Don't give me the light at the funeral. <laughs> Behind your head, nigga. <laughs> it's cold in here. They got this on a white people funeral. What are y'all doing? What? Who, who's at the thermostat? So. So I remember um, John was special, man. Um, just an incredible man. Um, me, me and Marlon had so much fun doing Wayne's Brothers with him. Uh, Cedric was right. This brother did love some chicken. Yes, this man. <laughs> On the, f <laughs> the first week of Wayne's Brothers, we were rehearsing, and he went to Pollo Loco and bought a really big bag of chicken, a whole bag of chicken. And me and Marlon was like, oh, man, that's beautiful, man. He went out and bought the cash lunch. This nigga ate that whole bag of chicken by himself. <laughs> he ate the bird on the bag. He killed the whole, he, he ate, ate every part of that chicken. He ate the butt, he, and he used to explain to you too. He's like, I was like, ew, the booty. He's like, yes, oh brother, you got to eat the booty. That's, that's where all the vitamin B is, see? <laughs> that's where all the vitamin B is, see? Whenever you seen John on screen, he was always eating some food, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, see? Mm -hmm. Whatever he was eating, it looked like he was eating chicken. He could eat some grapes and find a bone in it. He was like, yeah. Really, nigga? A, a bone in a grape? Really? Oh, yeah, Steve. <laughs> he would always um, give us advice, you know, because it is really hard trying to be a, a young brother, trying to navigate yourself in the, uh, the network world, trying to, you know, do a TV show and keeping your cool. He would keep our cool because me and Mom would go crazy because... A lot of times, you know, you're not able to do the show that you want to do, and, you know, sometimes I was like, yo, man, I'm gonna quit. He's like, no, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> you, 
you never want to say you're going to quit, Sean. So you got to get them keys. See, they always tell us about the keys. The keys is syndication, brother. You want to get to syndication, see? See, when you, get to, when you get to syndication, see, brother, you've got them keys, see? Then you go to South of France and, and hang out and, you know, go to the nude beach and read the paper, read the paper, brother. That's what I do, I read the paper. <laughs> Hi, Angie. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> um, and uh, so he told, told us to stay cool and, um, you know, just focus on what you can do and how you can make the show better. And we did, and we got them keys, and, um, you know, the show is history, and he, he was a huge part of that show. That show would not be what it is without John Witherspoon, so thank you, John Witherspoon. Um, I can't find anybody that has anything bad to say about John Witherspoon. He's a wonderful man. Um, look at all these people, you know, here. Actually, you know what? Only one person I ever seen talk sideways about John. Put y'all cameras down, niggas. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want this on it. This, this is just between us, right? And, and it wasn't like in a bad way. We, we're all comedians, so comedians just be popping noise off, you know, that's just how, we're crazy like that. So we in the back at the, um, we're at the Laugh Factory, and um, John Witherspoon is on, and he's killing. Me and Paul Mooney's in the back. <laughs> oh yes, homie, me and Paul Mooney's in the back watching, right? So, so um, John's on stage and he's killing, man. He's doing his Mick Jagger impersonation. <laughs> just destroying the whole place. Just people are pounding on tables. And Paul Mooney's back there, he gotta go on next. And he leans over and he says, pancakes, homie, pancakes. And I was like, what? Everyone loves pancakes. And what he was trying to say, <laughs> what he's trying to say by that is, Spoon is hilarious, but he didn't have no edge to him. So they called him Pancake Homie. Everyone loves pancakes. Now I disagree. But the one thing I will agree with that Mooney, that Mooney said was, everyone does love pancakes. Look at everybody here to see this man off. So Mooney was right. Everyone loves pancakes. Everyone loves pancakes. I told that story to John, and he was like, oh, F Mooney. <laughs> I'll kick his ass. <laughs> he won't say that to my face. He don't want none of this. I'm from Detroit. I'll get up, up in his ass. I used to like to egg him on. I'm like, I don't know, Pops. Yo, Mooney will take you. Mooney will take you. He'd be like, oh, hell, Paul can't fight. His hands are too small. He looks like a T-Rex. See? <laughs> He's a sissy. That's a sissy. Can't fight. Now look who's up at Richard Pryor's house cooking pancakes. Now who, who's, who's the pancake now, huh? <laughs> Don't, oh, 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 brother, oh, brother, oh, brother, oh, yeah, see? Oh, yeah, brother, he told me the to TC. Anyway, man. <laughs> pancakes, homie, pancakes. Everyone loves pancakes. Uh. Anyway, man, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna miss this man. Um, you know, uh, my brother Marlon would have loved to have been here, but he couldn't get out of his situation in New York. He's shooting something, but he's here in spirit. Pops, he sends his love to you. I'm gonna miss you. Yitty, love you.